Hello, in this video we're going to cover the seven exponent rules. After a brief review, we'll cover a bunch of quick examples that use maybe one or two or three of these rules in one problem. I'll also cover some of the common mistakes that, that come up when people are working with exponent problems. But first, let's cover the seven rules. y squared times y cubed would be y to the fifth because it's two plus three is five. That's called the product rule. Next, we have 3x quantity squared. This is called product to a power. We square 3 and we square x. This will be 9x squared. Next, we have what's called power to a power. z squared, quantity cubed. We actually multiply the exponents z to the 2 times 3, or z to the 6th. Next, we have a couple of quotient rules. The first one, it's quotient to a power. What you do is you apply that power to the numerator and you apply it to the denominator. So 4 squared is 16 over x squared. I do not use the word distribute. I say apply the exponent to the quotient. Next, we have another quotient rule. This is actually the quotient of powers rule. a to the fifth over a squared is a to the 5 minus 2 or a cubed. Next we have a couple quickies. Anything to the zero power is one. And lastly, when you raise something to a negative exponent, you actually take the reciprocal of the base. In this case, the base is x, so the reciprocal of the base is one over x. Now, let's take a look at uh, some, some other examples. But before we do the examples, we have to review a couple rules your order of operations still hold. Now a lot of these rules are exponent rules, so they will deal with the E of order of operations. Just to review, we have please excuse my dear Aunt Shaniqua. Now P is parentheses. E is exponent. MD, notice that MD is one step, not two steps. That's multiplication and division, and you just move left to right. And then lastly, you do any addition subtraction. Again, that's one step not two separate steps. So there's only four steps in the order of operation. If you don't violate these rules, you should be able to get the right answer. But another thing that comes up when doing these problems is the commutative property of multiplication. So when you are multiplying, you can actually rearrange the terms that you're multiplying. You do not have to multiply left to right. If it's a times b, you could do b times a. Most commonly, it'll be a times b times c, and then you can move the c wherever you like. We'll see that one in the next example. So let's take a look at 4x squared times 2x to the fourth. According to the commutative property of, of multiplication, we can actually multiply the 4 times 2. We just sort of rearrange them. Put the 4 next to the 2. Obviously, that was going to be 8. And then you put x squared next to the x to the fourth. And what do you get there? You actually add the exponents. So you get 8x to the sixth. Now over here, this is a very common problem. People remember that the zero exponent means one. So they think 5y to the zero is one, but it's not because according to order of operations, what do you do first? You do the exponent first. So there is actually only one thing being raised to the zero power and that's y. y is being raised to the zero power. 5y is not being raised to the zero power. In other words, the problem was not written like this. Okay, this was not the way the problem was written. It was 5 times y to the 0, which means 5 times 1, or just 5. That's a very common mistake. Now here's a couple more. In this problem, we have a product, and it's being raised to a power. Remember, we apply the exponent. And there's actually a couple things going on here. So we have product to a power, and here we have 4 squared, which would be 16, and then x squared, which is just x squared. But now here's a y cubed, and that y cubed is going to be squared. So it's y cubed quantity squared. That's power to a power. So that's going to be y to the sixth. Remember, you multiply powers when you do power to a power. How about this next one? Here we have a negative exponent, but the negative exponent is in the denominator. So I'm just going to write this out the long way. You won't have to do this in the future. This will be 1 over, now remember we stake the reciprocal of the base, so that would be 1 over 7 squared. Well, how do you do 1 divided by 
a fraction. 1 divided by 1 over, let's write that as 49, is the same as 1 times 49 over 1. So I'm really being kind of silly here. The answer was just 49. The final answer is just 49. So 1 over 7 squared is the same as just 7 squared. In other words, 7 squared moves into the numerator. So now we've kind of discovered a new rule. If we have a negative exponent in the denominator, that can change to a positive exponent in the numerator. The final answer in that case was 49, or 7 squared. Now let's take a look at this next problem. This, this next problem causes students a lot of heartache. Well, oftentimes students will think that because of one of these rules, we're going to take this squared and we're going to apply it. So they think, I'm going to put a question mark here, they think that it's x squared plus 3 squared. In other words, applying that exponent. And we shall see that this is not the case. So let's take a look at a similar example. What if instead of the x, we just replace that with the number 4? In other words, what if x were equal to 4? Wouldn't the same rule apply? And again, I'm going to put a question mark here. Wouldn't that mean that this was 4 squared plus 3 squared? Well, let's take a look. 4 squared plus 3 squared is actually 16 plus 9, and 16 plus 9 is equal to 25. Well, according to our order of operations, we, we really should do the parentheses first. 4 plus 3 is 7, so this is actually 7 squared, and 7 squared is actually 49. So the correct answer is 49. The incorrect answer is 25 which means this thing we did up here is incorrect. This is not equal. You cannot, quote unquote, distribute that exponent. That's why I hate using the word distribute. There is no distributive property of exponents. This exponent does not get distributed. It absolutely is not the case. So, getting back to this original problem, this is not the correct answer. We cannot distribute that squared. So what I tell people is, if you forget a rule, you can always go back to the definition of exponents. And what is the definition of squared? The definition of squared means to multiply something by itself. So if we didn't learn any exponent rules, remember at the very top we covered five, I'm sorry, seven exponent rules very quickly. Let's say we didn't know any of these exponent rules. To square something means to multiply it by itself, which means this is not an exponent rules problem. This is actually a FOIL problem. And very quickly, to do FOIL, you multiply the first. x times x is x squared. And then outside, x times 3 is 3x. Inside, x times 3 is 3x. So we're actually going to combine like terms. We get a 6x. And lastly, L, last. 3 times 3 is 9. So the correct answer in this case is x squared plus 6x plus 9. This is a FOIL problem. This is not an exponent rules problem. That's a very common mistake. Let's do a couple more problems. These ones will involve quotients. Again, when you have a quotient to a power, you apply the power to the numerator and apply the power to the denominator. So 3y squared is going to be 9 y squared all over. Now the denominator is x to the fourth, but that's going to be squared, which means x to the fourth quantity squared, 4 times 2 is 8. x to the eighth. That's the final answer. Now let's take a look at this next problem, and I'll, I'll cover a very quick uh, example of, of what mistakes students make. a cubed over a to the seventh. Well, people know that we're supposed to do we're supposed to subtract the powers. And so people will say, well, 7 minus 3 is 4. So they'll think, oh, this is just a to the fourth, right? And the answer is no. You don't do 7 minus 3. You do 3 minus 7. And 3 minus 7 is a negative 4. So one way of writing this is a to the negative 4. Well, we don't like to write negative exponents in our final answer. This is really 1 over a to the fourth. So this is actually our final answer, 1 over a to the fourth. 
Now, sometimes people could do this very quickly. They'll say 7 minus 3, and then they'll write the final answer 4 in the denominator because there's more a's, 8 times itself, 7 times in the denominator. So let's take a look at a couple examples that confuse some students initially. How about x squared over x to the negative 3? One way of looking at this is to actually say 2 minus, now careful, it's not 2 minus 3, it's 2 minus negative 3. And a 2 minus negative 3 is actually a positive 5. So this would be x to the fifth. Now there's another way of doing this, and that is we have x squared in the numerator, but this x to the negative 3 can turn into x cubed in the numerator. And again, we get the answer of x to the fifth. So x to the fifth is our answer either way. Oops, sorry about that. Let's do another one. This time the negative exponent is in the numerator. And again, let's try this one two different ways. One is to do negative two minus five. Now negative two minus five is a negative seven. So our final, or not our final answer, but y to the negative two over y to the fifth would be y to the negative seven, which translates into one over y to the seventh. Now again, there's another way of doing this. One is to move the exponent. So let's do this in red and let's do it over to the left. So here we have this y to the fifth in the denominator, but what if this y to the negative two can just move to the denominator and become y squared in the denominator? My numerator is now one. What do we get? We get one over y to the seventh, just like we got before. How about one final example? And this example looks pretty complicated. We've got a two cubed in the numerator. Hopefully you see that two cubed is gonna be eight and we've got some stuff going on in the denominator, four squared, four squared is gonna be 16. Now, there's a lot of stuff going on here. I've got a two times a, times a three, and, and then we've got four, but then four is being squared, and then we've got some, some common power, I'm sorry, common uh, bases, x to the fifth times x squared, and then we've got a quantity squared, but I hope you see that this entire bracket this entire bracket is being raised to the zero power. Everything in these brackets is being raised to the zero power. So it really doesn't matter what, is, what end this bracket ends up being, as long as it's not a zero, it doesn't really matter what quantity it is. Raising that to the zero power gives us one. So this final, this, this entire problem really blows up to being some very, very simple numbers, eight over 16, which reduces to one half. And that is our final answer, okay? So this entire thing down here, this entire thing just simplifies to the one because of that zero exponent. All right, so those were a couple of quick examples. Good luck on your own.